Welcome. 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 Please welcome. The Outdoor Project Podcast. Hear real conversations from industry leaders on the latest in the hardscape and landscape industry. Brought to you by Cincinnix Landscape Supply. You're now streaming the Outdoor Project Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Project Podcast. Today we have Phil Baylor from Pave Tool Innovators. And another special guest that we've had on for the second time, Josh Jones from Mass Hardscapes. Yeah, What's up, lucky. guys? Lucky. Lucky. But you oh, know what? Awesome. It's it's really nice to see. Um, you know, we we sell these tools here, and we get these calls from foremans that maybe you know the the owner of the company finally took that step to invest in these products. And we, I have gotten calls, and I know um, Chris and Andy have too. That the foreman called and and thanked us. For selling these products it made his day you know his first day on the job with a suction tool or what that much better and he looks forward to coming to work and i think josh you talked about that in the yeah. last podcast too is you know not your foremans or your laborers are just looking forward to coming to, or you know they have that goal or they want to look forward to going to aruba or something because <laughs> they can so you know it's just but it, it 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 really um means a lot to us that we provide the tools and they give us feedback as well yeah, I, we had a contractor yesterday at Teco. He was buying one of the um, tracers, I think it was. I mean, w- what tool is that? So is it so mostly for like it's pool a pretty coping? unique tool. And, um, you know, for pool coping, it's basically um, an extendable shaft. And on one side, it has a guide. And the other side, it has an idler with a marker in it. You put your own marker in it. And I created originally for, I would see our guys doing a serpentine walkway. So say you're doing an 80-foot serpentine walkway fixed pattern you got to cut both sides so the one side you're going to cut or you know lay out with your flex pipe and you mark it and you take a lot of time getting it just right and then you cut it then i'd see our guys with a tape measure measuring across say 42 inches they'd go two feet 42 inches go two feet measure for down the entire walkway and then they put their flex pipe on the other side and then they take pavers and hold down the flex pipe to get it just right and back <laughs> up and they look at it and they straighten it, it and sounds from tweak it <laughs> getting me tired so, just <laughs> telling me about this <laughs> and then i can't even never, tell you fast and then it never looks right, right you're right. like ah, oh, this section right? and then you move in and then the pipe moves it's like oh. so with the tracer our interchangeable handle locks into it so standing up all you do is you watch that guide you set your width which again it's retractable so you set your width and you're just literally walking backwards down the walkway, holding it tight to the one side and square, and it automatically marks your other side. And what is that called? Is that the quickie scribe? Or it's is a tracer. It's so a tracer. tracer. Is that different from the... The scribe is a small one. It's a smaller so it's one. It's a smaller version and does more of your marking, like for caps and border stones. And yeah, we get contractors so in here that always, you know, they're on the internet and they're like, I need that one tool that, you know, that one tool that you can scratch, you know what I mean? So it's nice to have the names to yeah. these tools because yeah. I'm sure they're going to watch this and, you know, we're going to get a bunch of orders. I want you to, I talked to Josh a little bit about the nunchucks for, uh, <laughs> for retaining wall trenches. That, <laughs> I think that's a really cool product too. Yeah, that is a cool product. So Explain what that is. That's, that's one of our favorites. And again, I talk about systems. So when we're doing a retaining wall, automatically the num trucks is our wall screen system. <laughs> <laughs> that got named the num trucks early on, even when I first started filming our tools up in Canada. It was so dangerous. Bring out the num trucks. So, but the num trucks with the, uh, with the chain and the pipes on it, obviously that comes out when we're doing retaining walls. Your six foot, our six, six foot level comes out. Um, our BL 180 comes out and our BL 450. So like, like I said, systems. The guys know exactly what tools are coming out for every job. And the the the, um, the num trucks is basically 15 linear feet of, of chain with pipes attached at five-foot intervals. And I did it five-foot intervals because we would normally set um, pipes with a laser for our height. We'd set our, our elevation on our laser rod to exact height of what we want our base. And then we'd set these pipes front to back with our laser real quick and easy. Because it killed me to see these guys on their hands and knees and they're wailing these blocks. And I mean, pounding them to beat the band. And then they set the level on front to back sides and they rip it out and they scrape it down and they put it back and they hammer it again and they pull it out. <laughs> I'd be like, what are you guys doing? And like, it would kill me. And I still see it to this day. I see guys doing it and they'll, yeah. spend, they'll spend a half hour doing a 10 foot section, you know, trying to get it just right and just level. So. I'll go back just a little bit. We set our gravel base or our open grade base, either or. I set it to about an inch below finish grade. 
Then I put on these pipes, and again, the chain keeps them five feet apart, so my six-foot screeder is always going to fit on there. I set the one end with a laser, set the other end with a laser. I go to my next pipe, set it, set it. I set all four pipes. Now I've got 15 linear feet of base dead level with my laser. Then, And I'm not sure if you guys bag it, but our, our distributor uh, by us, he bags the number eight stone, so a three-eighths chip wash stone. He bags it, so a 50-pound bag will do literally 10 feet. So if I'm doing an 80-foot wall, automatically eight bags get delivered with my delivery. So it's very simple, and it's clean, and it's neat. It's not another product that i got to bring to the job. So I, And then I sprinkle that on one side, you know, closest maybe to the chain. I put my screeder on there, and I just drag it out. And I've got a dead-level setting bed. For my straight walls, I take my chalk line, I snap a chalk line on the back of the wall, and you lay the block out. So it's, it takes a job that's grueling and miserable, and all of a sudden it's like, and you're done. You know, just really quick, and you're not, you don't break a sweat. No, I think it's one of the it's, tools that makes like the biggest difference. Like you go from the old way of doing it to that, and it's the clearest difference. It's huge. You'll never want to go back. To yeah, I, I, I keep guy. laughing at you because I, you know, them pounding those block. I remember <laughs> oh. being on a job site with my brother and him slamming his his thumb oh, and yeah. watching his thumb grow. And I'm like, there's <laughs> got to be an easier way. He's the one that's a professional <laughs> swimmer now. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> You know, it's fu- <laughs> it's funny for us, but it's not very funny for the person that's hitting their no. thumb with a rubber mallet. Right. Yeah, but we used to laugh at each other. Whoever got hurt, everybody else is laughing so hard. But you know, so our industry it's known a lot for tennis elbow and yeah. for uh, carpal tunnel. So a lot of those things are related to swinging a hair and just beating products. That there's really no need to do it these days. Yeah, and I, I really have had I've had a couple guys give me some ultimate compliments on our tools. He's like, your tools are like going from a rotary phone. To an iPhone. <laughs> so it's, you know, some of those comments. I had another guy says, boy, he says, you're teaching me. He says, I'm, how did it go? He said, um, he says, you're solving problems that I didn't even know I had. He said, yeah, <laughs> I'll yeah. tell you another product. That's just incredible. I couldn't stand, you know, one o'clock, you could just get back from lunch. You ate way too much. I know that was an issue we just discussed. Well, you love pizza. So you <laughs> always eat too but much. <laughs> you finish a section and then you got to screen a new section. You got to get on your knees, your all wet because the the sand is all wet, and then you just you hate your life. But you got the screed rails that are on a basically like a broom handle that you can do standing up now too. So our yeah our screeder package is a real popular product for us. And again, we saw that a lot. Again, back strain. If you're in our industry for ten years, eighty percent of you'll have a back injury, and that's probably even low. But it is staggering the amount of of people that have back injuries in our in our industry. And again, if you have a workman's comp claim, I mean it can run up. Well over a hundred grand. Um, we've had a number of workmen's comps claims over the years, and so we're always trying to solve that. And I tried teaching guys and telling them, I said, you can't afford a workman's comp claim. You have to start working smarter, and that's why I continually. I think they call it hardscape for a reason. These guys I deal with are hard headed. It's hard, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably myself and probably one of them too. But it's very hard, you know, teach an old dog a new trick, and so I'm constantly trying to encourage them to work the right way. It'll retain help. You know, and it's going to eliminate these back issues. And like with the uh, stand-up screeder, it's really sweet because you can start in a corner, and we usually run three-man crew. It's, we found it to be the most efficient if you're doing a walk, standard walk or a patio. Um, a three-man crew, and you start in one corner, lay out your street rails, and you just start street. And once they get a section started, two guys will go, and they'll start doing the layout and snapping lines and, you know, straightening things out, start laying some pavers. No other guy's street, and he just casually – he can just keep ahead of them, just screeting out, standing up, dumping his piles of sand or number eight stone and just screeting out very easily. And then you can flip our screeder package over, and it's got kind of a rounded end. And instead of taking a wheelbarrow and going around your paver setting bed and going onto the pavers and taking a trowel and filling the void where your screed rails were, our guy stays out on his, on his gravel base or, or the uh, open-grade stone, and he'll throw his, like in a shovel, like in a rolled motion. It leaves a little windrow of sand or number eight stone. And the back side of that screeder we created so that you can really just grab that, and it's just like floating concrete. You pull that out, and it leaves you a level screeding bed. So you're not interrupting the install process. And the guy doing the screed, and he just becomes really good at it. And that comes with different lengths, too. How many different six lengths foot, you got? Four foot six and a three. Wow. So it's all inclusive package. And I, people say, why don't you make it bigger? I have made it bigger. So I've made some larger ones, and the most you can do is um, six foot, really. Yeah. You get any bigger than that, and you can't control it. So yeah, there's two. You're, you're back moving to, too you're much. Back to two or three yeah. guys, um, you know, and you got one guy shoveling, one guy in each end. So it becomes very ineffective. So you're better off doing more street rails, 
like I said, with the ease of just pulling out that void there, it really makes it simple to, to work it that way. It's just simple things like that. I was watching Instagram this morning, and they were they had this guy who was in mud pounding spikes in with a hammer, and then the other guy, there was five spikes, and they were lined up, and who, who could do it faster? The other guy's got a drill, drilling the spikes down, and, you know, the other guy's getting soaking wet on the on the ground, and right. it's raining. This guy's done, like, 10 seconds, you know, every every 10 seconds he's killing this guy with, you know, just simple tools like that. It's, it makes a huge difference. Right. Never you, mind, and that's just when you're fresh. Never mind yeah. if you're doing an 80-foot walkway. By the time you get to the end of that walkway, I mean... Your arm is just shot, and then you're chipping pavers because you're missing because yeah. of fatigue. Got the customer That's talking to you, smashing your thumb. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> they were talking a little bit yesterday at the Teco show about splitting block, you know, and and, and paver Pete had the pretty good uh, analogy about hammering this thing all the way around maybe seven times. He's like, ah, forget it. Let's get the cracker out. Let's get the cracker out and split some block. I'm that's la- another product that I really like. I'm laughing over here because that's how I learned how to split block. I know. When I, know. I started, I didn't have a, we didn't have splitters, right. so we split every yep, block by hand. Around, and, score, but and even score, so, that geez. one splitter that you always had to wind down, I don't. I can't tell you how how much it hurts your hand winding that down and then the guillotine and, it, and it's still not bad don't get me wrong but the cracker is a lot better but yeah. you know how you have to yeah and then pull it again right. and, and you then gotta twist them have two levers on it and if you're not doing it consistent you can't get it once yeah. you bind it it's really hard to get it back to even but the cracker, yeah you pull your pins for your different heights and then obviously you got the one pedal that inches it up fast and then your other pump pedal which all hydraulics, 20 ton, yeah, right? Twenty ton jack inside of it, and it just yeah snaps your product really accurately. That's a must have. So it's, it's a must. Snappers have. are definitely a must. Yep. Yeah, especially with all the walls you're doing now, and you know the end units. They don't really give you end units in the package, so you always, if you're not ending a wall with a pillar, you have to snap all of those. And you can get creative too, different angles and stuff. You can buy certain pallets do come with a corner piece, but if you want to get creative or do special angles or forty fives or something like that, that gives you the opportunity to do that. I know the only problem they had with the cracker, too, is guys were laying it down, and something with the hydraulic fluid or something was... Yeah, you have to be careful you don't get air up in the hydraulic cylinder, yep. Yeah, so guys will bring it back to us, and we keep telling them, listen, don't leave that thing down, down. leave it upright, you know what I mean? And treat your tools, and I think Paper Pete went through that in, uh, you know, your your trailers, and having that organized where, you you know, you're you're spending a lot of money on these tools and making sure you're treating them well for the investment. Yeah, that is key. Being organized, um, if you saw yesterday, we have that new, our new rolling toolbox. I know you wanted to talk about some of our new tools, one of our new products this year, but we have a rolling toolbox that literally lets you get 50 tools in your backyard fast and efficient. That's one thing we see, guys, even in a job trail, you bring your wheelbarrow in your job trail, and you throw all the tools in your wheelbarrow and a toolbox maybe, and you get in the backyard and you dump them out or lay them down and and still, when you're looking for something, you're digging through that toolbox, you know, like, kind of like a dog digging for a bone. You're pulling, pulling, <laughs> pulling until you finally find what you need. Where our toolbox, it's all, all the tools are nested in foam. So it's a direct visual. Your tools are right there. You know, you look at a mechanic and a, that owns a snap-on box. You, everything's very organized at its place. That's the same thing with our tools. The more you can be organized, the more time you're going to save. And there's an there's a, um, economics term. It's called opportunity costs. And if you have a task that takes you, say, uh, 10 minutes longer, you've really lost 20 minutes because extra 10 minutes you spent doing that task, you could have been doing your next task. So we teach that a lot to our guys who are trying to speed up production. If you can save and shave 10 minutes, if you can save 15, you know, every, every time, every minute you save, it doubles. So if you save 15 minutes, you've saved a half hour. You save 90 minutes, you save, obviously, you know, three hours. So it's... It's really interesting that you can speed up productivity. And we did just an analogy. It's even in our, our catalog where, you know, if we get a guy that's got to go to the truck four times in a day, at five minutes, it, it's amazing what it adds up. It ends up being like $3,200 a year, yeah. you know, when you put paper to oh. pencil. And again, math doesn't lie. It does. And I I'm always so say glad you keep time. saying that because <laughs> I've heard that my whole life. For business owners, it's amazing. You, you really need to put, you know, pen to paper on a lot of these things because you'd be, you'd be surprised when you put paper to, or pen to paper – it, it comes out in the end, you're like, wow. You know, even like with equipment, tools, it's like, it doesn't cost you. You know, it's not how much it costs, it's really how much it saves, you know, with equipment and tools. So if you, if you do your homework and buy the right tools for your jobs and the right equipment, it it's, does nothing but help you elevate your company. It's really so a no-brainer. 
So you guys really aren't the odd couple across from us. I mean, now I understand why you guys hang out with each other, you know, and I make a good team. <laughs> I met Josh yesterday, you know, but I know Chris did the podcast with him, but I watched it a couple of times and you're a big numbers guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And tools are important. And I, as I, you know, you've built these tools or selling these tools and you're a numbers guy. And I understand kind of the connection here and how important the efficiency of business is. You know what I mean? And not only are you guys bringing the tools to the table, but you guys are really teaching guys how to run their business efficiently. We try. <laughs> passion breeds passion. I love it. There's yeah. another thing I can just touch on, and, and I see it, and I still hear it. Everywhere I go, I hear about the square footage pricing. You know, and I, I kind of give, give a simple analogy, and I say, you, you got to bid unit pricing. Is, it's not fair. If you're doing, say, I do a 100-foot walkway, right, in my front yard, and I always base out a foot beyond. So on that 100-foot walkway... 400 by four feet, 400 square feet, right? I'm putting an additional 100, 200 square feet of base on each side of that walkway. I've got 200 linear feet of edging on each side of that walkway. I've got 200 feet of border on each side of that walkway. So it gets expensive. I got 200 feet of cutting if it's a fixed pattern. I can do the exact same square footage in my backyard. Say I have a 20 by 20 patio in my backyard. It's up against the house. It's a square pattern. I have no cutting. If I look at my base a foot beyond, I only have 20, 40. I only have 60 square feet of extra base. I only have 60 linear feet of edging. I only have 60 linear feet of water. So those numbers are staggering. So when some people say, oh, I get $23 or $18 a square foot, you're dreaming because you are not even close to being accurate if you're comparing those two, you know, those two scenarios. Because you, you should be almost one and a half, if not twice as much for that walkway that needs you know, cutting on each side. Yeah, we, it's it's job specific, right? Right. You know, you need to do unit pricing, job on your costing. Job. Exactly. Know what your numbers are. Yeah, and we, you know, we live by the lakes here too. It's so it's it's, uh, it's all about. I mean, can you even get in the backyard? You right. know what I mean. You're going down these hills. Do you got to take all this all this equipment, all this material down with wheelbarrows or right. what have you? You know, there's there's so many things to job sites that you know it's a it's a huge variable it's job specific huge sure. variable i get this question all the time i mean because we are in the in the industry i mean people don't know the correct way to price it and i i always say uh, most guys are most of the successful guys are really job costing it because every single job is different right. no job is going to be the same we had a guy yesterday called in and said where he where he should be just doing veneer stone he's doing a fireplace and he's using the iq saw he, you know he's using the iq saw to cut all his veneer too but he had so many cuts and so many lineal feet of corners i mean for an example your corners are double the price right, of your right. flats you know and he went in as a square foot he goes i think you know I, I don't think i'm making the money i should you know and he's got another labor and i'm going it's job specific. You know, you went at 25 bucks a square foot, but think about all those corners. You should be up about 50 bucks a square foot, not saying you're trying to, you know, get over on your customer, but it's job specific. Right. I mean, you've got so many corners and costs there. You got a little bit of labor, you know, but everything should be job specific. You're in business to make money. Right. I mean, right. You can't not, lose focus. Of that. Yeah. yeah. You're not there to do them a favor. And I, mean, I think we all can say, or a lot of us can say we love what we do. And I, I find it so intriguing, and you've maybe heard me say this example, but if somebody needs to put a roof on their house, I mean, you see the customer, they're about putting the ink through the check because they're so ripped, they're going to spend thirty grand redoing their roof. There's something they're not going to enjoy. But yet, when they work with us, they got the biggest grin on their face, and they're writing going to check for 30, 50, sometimes 100 grand. Yeah. And they got the biggest smile on their face, <laughs> and they can't wait to invite their family and their friends over to enjoy that. So I think it, with our industry, there's so much passion you know, what guys are doing. They just, it's neat to see how much people love and appreciate what they're doing for a living. And they are having fun out there building these backyard dreams. We get to refocus in the, in the off season and see what tools maybe we aren't carrying. Um, and yesterday we get a lot of, a lot of uh, people asking about drainage and we don't carry any drainage. And there's something that you guys came out with that. Can you expand on that a little bit? So pretty cool product. And, um, now, some of you probably heard me say this over and over again, but a lot of our drains that we have in our industry are tapered, and I'm not sure why they do it, but they're tapered down from the top down. And so when you compact your soils around those drain basins with vibration and compaction, as, the vi as it vibrates and compacts, you're working that drain up out of the ground. And so it really gets frustrating. I and mean, I used to tap con like big square pieces of block to the bottom of our drains to keep them from uplift, but 
it obviously got expensive and costly, and it was frustrating. So we created our own adjustable drain, which is really unique, and it locks right into a four-inch um, triple wall or S and D or SDR thirty-five. Locks right into it, and then it has a. It's all. Um, it's all stainless steel. It's got a nut on top, and you can run either with a wrench or a socket or even a, on your uh, drill. But it'll travel up and down three inches. So it makes it really simple, and it always rotates. So, again, instead of having to measure, like, from a house a certain point and get your drain exactly square, the only thing you need to do with our drain is get the elevation fairly close. And we'll usually – you can set the drain so it's about halfway. You got three inches of play, really. Yeah, so you got you an inch and a half up, inch and a yeah. half down. And if you can't hit that on your first you shot, you should be, <laughs> be in business. You better buy a zip level. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, that's great. But it really works slick because we used to get so exact. Like, say you're doing a pool uh, patio, and those, those are famous for you cannot get the water. If you got a house on one side and a pool on the other, that's an area where you cannot get water. So you're always putting some kind of a surface drain in. And we'd get, you know, obviously from the longest lengths, sometimes it'd be 20, 30 feet you're traveling, you're getting that pitch just exact. And then if that drain elevates a half inch, that can really throw you off. Yeah. And you're back digging it out and taking your grinder and cutting the pipe down and lowering your drain down. So Now, now for these products or new products or products, existing products, do you guys have it like a YouTube channel that these guys can go to, to like how-tos and stuff? So we do. We have a full YouTube uh, channel, Pave Tool Innovators. Um, you click on videos, and we got, I don't know, it's probably hundreds of videos at this point um, on our YouTube channel. And it's a lot of instructional videos. I do a tip of the week every Friday. Um, some people find that effective. So that's something they can s- consider, too. Yeah, those are some good videos. We were watching a few of them. It's so definitely uh, inspirational. <laughs> what do we try? What do you think the advantage of us carrying your products or p- or contractors buying from a, a dealer like us? So that's a, that's a great question. I think is a, and I can see just from your showroom here, you guys have a lot of passion for the industry. And the more you can have passion for your installers, and even I was just, I was at another dealer not too long, and I just, I was encouraging them and saying, get involved in your guys' projects. You know, when they come in, act excited. Because nobody wants, it's it's good for a contract. I speak as a contract. Obviously, when I come into a dealer, if they if they have active interest in my project, it definitely, I build a connection with you as a, as a dealer. So the more you can support your contractors, and again, some of these guys, just they just don't know. You know, to have a professional like yourselves steer them through the project in a certain way or, you know, if they're doing a certain task, say, have you ever thought about maybe getting a clamp? You know, if you're using straps, you really might want to rethink this. Or even I've had many dealers actually take our products and rent them out. It might be something you consider. I'm not, I'm not trying to open a can we of do, worms. We yeah, but, but the rent maybe some is probably rent with the option to buy. You rent it the first day, you get the fr- all that rental towards the purchase of the tool. But we have dealers that do that. But I think the more you can can share your passion for the industry with the contractor and even giving them the helps or the tools, and it might not be that you're you're not going to retire over selling our tools, unfortunately. <laughs> but to <laughs> offer that support, um, and even the way our tool business started originally, it was one of the large block manufacturers. Phil, you got to get your tools in the hands of the installer. So you're wasting time installing. Your tools are effective. And he looked at it saying the faster he can get his installers to install product, the more product they're going to nice. come back and buy from the manufacturer. And it's the same way with you. The more, the more you're giving your installers the proper tools, the more efficient they're going to be, the more profitable they're going to be. They're going to be back in here. They're going to obviously be more profitable, do more jobs, keep their, their staff happier, retention of help. So just it's a win-win all around if you can support your contractors with the tools. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, and we do a good job at it because we do. I mean, daily, it's like a guy will call me and say, hey, you guys just deliver those 10 steps. We thought we could do it with straps, but do you have one of those lifters we could borrow? And I'm like, yeah, actually, we do. We used to. <laughs> so yeah. Someone stole it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they come back. You know, we try, the thing about renting, and like you said, you don't want to open up a can of worms, is we do, we do rent, but sometimes a little bit hesitant because – it never comes back the way, yeah. you know, and you wish they would respect it a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, we say try to take care of it, you know, and somehow, you know, the thing comes back a little bent. Or, you know, we, we rented the um, the wheel, uh, the roller, the tamper. And next thing you know, you know, we got we to gotta replace one of the wheels or something like that. So right. the cost of it, it's, it's a little, it's a little. Yep, uh, yep they'll almost be set up for it and expect that. It's yeah. Gonna, but it's a must, though. Yeah. It really is. It really is. Especially to sell the product. It's not so really to rent, but a lot of guys that are really interested, we would like to test it out for them. You know what I mean? And they say, listen, if it works, we'll buy it. You know, so right. we really have to invest in that. 
we have we have a lot of contract, not rare, and I'm being honest. I'm re- it's not rare that a guy will say, "Man, I bought that client and it paid for itself in the first job." Well, I got guys. A guy was just recently. He said like 38 steps in the morning with our client. He says, "I I couldn't believe how efficient it was." You know, so really, if you get in the systems, you know, when using the clamps, it's amazing how much faster, more efficient you can be. I know what I used to do too. I if I had a big job where I wanted a new tool, I'd always just put that cost right into that job. So Smart, say yep. $7,800 for that clamp and you got 15 steps to put in. Why not just put that seven or 800 bucks right. for that clamp, buy it. And then it's, it's, it's like, it for, just yeah. paid for itself with right. that one job. Did you have to hide that 800 bucks from your wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's going towards your favorite tool yeah. instead of buying her a uh, trip to Aruba. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aruba. <laughs> So, Josh, I know you've been a little bit quiet here. So if you had to give a word of advice to a, a new guy or even some old guys that just don't want to change their ways, you know, what would it be for, you know, the new tools out here? Oh, <laughs> buy them all. You just buy, put them on the know, spot. Buy, yeah, I know. That's hard. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it's an investment, right? And that's what they don't understand, that it is an investment. Right. I mean, I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for all the tools I've invested in. I was good it was good for me because I just got that pounded in my head before I started my company, like invest in this stuff and you'll be better off. And it has, I mean, obviously I wasn't able to buy everything right off the bat. It takes time, but, um, adding just a little bit every year, it makes a big difference. Um, so just buy what you can do your research, like Phil is saying, and, and, and buy what's going to help you the most. You know, if you do a lot of steps, invest in a clamp. Um, if you do a lot of pavers, buy like the scooter kit and some of the lifters, like just, buy what's going to help you the most. Yeah, that's, that's it's really good advice because I think sometimes we get those old school masons, you know, that just never want to change their ways and they're still using the wheel carts and you're wondering why right. they're walking in here <laughs> yeah. like, but they're, you know what I mean? But uh, I, street rail, I can go buy a two by four for a dollar ninety nine at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had a contractor come to my, at one of my booths and he was with all his guys and he started, we were using one of our clamps for setting retaining wall block. And he starts laughing and poking his buddies. I started talking. I said, you have any idea what you're, what you're laughing at? I was like, that's a 104-pound block. And he looked at maybe a little bit different. That He's like, okay, 104 pounds. Yeah, that's pretty heavy. And in the next sentence, he told me he's got to go for back surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I just took advantage of that. I really started needling him a little bit in a good way. You know, I wasn't rude at all. I just I said, you really hear yourself? And I hear it so often. I hear yeah. a guy laughing at our screeder package. And then he's next minute, I had another guy saying, I got to go for knee surgery. Like, yeah. so some of these things, it's like no brainer. It's like, you really need to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. And it's incredible. Those, those lifters, they're not just lifting one retaining wall block. You're right. doing two at a time. Yeah. Or up I mean, to three or four. Or, yeah. yeah. Five or six, depending on how they're stacked on a pallet. We have our multi-block lift attachment that actually can hang four of our clamps off it. So you could literally grab an entire layer of retaining wall block and you move it over the wall and you can set one, set two, set three, set all four clamps. You're laying 10 so to 12 square foot at a time. Yeah. It's called so the entire layers. So it is, it is definitely taking the heart out of hardscaping. <laughs>